Welcome to episode two, part one of Design Time. Yes, this is so important and riveting that it takes two parts to cover it. In this episode, we're going to talk about how information sticks in your brain using two examples that will help this information stick in your brain. Let's get started. So let's begin with our first example. I love the old 60s comedy, The Dick Van Dyke Show. Now stick with me, this will make sense in a minute. In fact, I own every episode and can literally quote lines from the show. I know trivia about the show, behind the scenes stories, facts about the actors' lives. I mean, I am into it. And the reason why is because I've been watching this show since I was a kid when I watched reruns of it with my mom. When my kids were growing up, I introduced them to the show and they loved it too. We would get pizza for dinner and sit and watch our favorite episodes. We'd laugh and quote lines to each other. They're grown now and they still talk about it. Now, why can I remember all that when I can't remember where I put my car keys? The answer is shelves. Let's go to the whiteboard of enlightenment and I'll explain. Okay, you're thinking, shelves? What the heck do you mean? Well, think of your mind as a closet or pantry, a room that has a lot of shelves. Now, think of your memories as the things that live on those shelves. Some things wind up on shelves where we can remember them for longer periods of time, and some things don't. So what increases the shelf life, if you will, of some memories over others? Well, memories don't exist in isolation. Things stay in our memory for lots of reasons, and each reason is a shelf. Take my Dick Van Dyke example. I'm a walking Dick Van Dyke expert for lots of reasons. I've watched it over and over, so there's repetition, which creates a shelf. There's an emotional connection to my mom. I appreciate really clever, humorous writing. There's an emotional connection to my kids and our shared experience. The more shelves I have for information, the more likely that information sticks. In other words, your brain is tagging information with lots of different labels and then cross-referencing them all which provides multiple pathways for accessing the information. Now, later, we'll learn about how all those pathways get created and expanded in the brain. But first, let's look at how information gets to their shelves in the first place. In the exciting conclusion to this episode, we'll explain how information moves through the brain and into long-term memory. See you in part two. Thanks for joining us today. Click on the left to watch the next video in this series, or click on the right to watch another video from our channel. And don't forget to click the center channel icon to subscribe. Thanks for watching.